What movie plot hole bothers you the most? Not sure if it counts as a plot hole. But what exactly determines what products are sentient in Sausage Party? We see in the beginning the jar of mustard commits suicide by jumping off the cart and shattering. But then with products like the buns and the sausages. Each one is individually sentient and the bag just holds them in. Then we see a bag of chips. Where the bag is sentient and the chips inside represent its insides. What about a bag of grapes? Is each one its own person? Or is the bag the person? What about products that are packaged differently? Is an ear of corn sentient or are the individual kernels alive? And if it is each one is its own person. Then is creamed corn just mashed up body parts? Or is the can itself sentient? Die Hard 2. The idea that you can have planes circling dulls for over an hour that don't have enough fuel to reach another airport. National is 40 f king miles away. Towards the start of the first Monsters Incorporated. Mike Wazowski says to Sully you've been jealous of my good looks since the 4th grade this line essentially cancels out the second film where they meet each other at college for the first time. Prometheus. You're a xenobiologist who has worked their entire life to learn about the fundamentals of biology. The possibilities for life on other planets. And the intricacies of how biomechanical functions create the processes for cellular replication. You understand keenly that you do not contaminate your specimens. You've spent hundreds of hours in the lab. You're so good. In fact. That you are selected for a voyage to be the first human to witness and catalog alien life. You meet a space snack. What do you do? Well. Easy. You take your FCK ein helmet off. Shti yeah. W O O O. Yolo moth FCK -ers. I'm Molik that snack. FCK Yerana. It's offensively stupid. The X-Files movie from the late 90s. Mudder travels to Antarctica. Gets a snow cat. Runs out of gas. Finds an alien base. Rescues Scully. And as they escape the base. The entire alien base turns into a ship and takes off. So. Now. They're stranded in Antarctica with no vehicle. No means of communication. And at least a full tank of gas away from any other base. Plus. Scully's just coming out of a coma. So she's not going anywhere for a while. They're completely screwed. Smash cut to Scully at a hearing in Washington D. C. WTF. It pulled me out of the movie so hard I can't remember anything else about it. In the bee movie they give honey back to the bees in the wild. I watched the show dog with a blog with younger cousins and two episodes stood out. In an earlier season. Stan. The talking dog. Told the story of getting a little white pill and after a strange weekend at the vet. He had no desire for kids anymore. My cousins did not understand but basically. Stan got neutered. Then. In a later season. Stan gets married and has puppies. I feel like the only one who noticed this. The dog wife has some explaining to do. Why didn't Cinderella's shoe disappear at 12? You can't return shoes after they've been worn outside. At the end of Space Jam Michael Jordan leaves the ground at half court but it only counts as a two point shot even though no part of him or the players that are blatantly fouling him are within the three point line. The final score should be 79-77 tune squad. Not 78-77. Edit. Jordan does not dunk the ball and even if he did dunk the ball it should still be worth three points. In the original Terminator it's stated that only organic matter can travel through time. Hence the T-800's living tissue over robotic endoskeleton. But if the T-1000 is purely a mimetic polyalloy. How did it travel back in time? Conversation with my dad watching that movie in the 80s. Dad. I don't get why they sent the good guy back without any guns or anything. Me. Because you can only send organic matter back in time. Dad. Do up. Dad. What are you talking about? Arnie's is a gigantic robot. How does that work? Me. He's only a robot inside dad. He's got human skin and muscles. Dad. So. 
as long as it's flesh and blood on the outside. You can send technology back. Me. Yeah. Dad. So why didn't they just grab a dead dog? Stuff it with guns and grenades. Sew it up and send it back with him? Me. Do what? Because. Uh. Dad. Because what? Me. Because. Uh. God dad. I can't be bothered explaining it to a stupid grown up. The T-Rex door in Jurassic World. What possible purpose could there be for putting a door to the Rex pen right in the middle of the shopping area of the park where hundreds or thousands of people are located at any given time of day? When would you ever even think about opening that door? That Zazu didn't know that Scar killed Mufasa. Scar knocking him out must have done some damage. Spider-Man 3. If the butler knew what really happened to Harry's dad. Why the FCK did he keep his mouth shut? So much tea would have been avoided if he spoke sooner. In Frozen. When Han stops the soldier from killing Elsa. Why? His plan to become king hinges on her death and he had a room full of witnesses to see somebody else doing it. He gets to keep his hands clean and Anna will cling to him even more. Stupid. Stupid hands. Sorry. My toddlers love that damn movie and I've seen it way more times than I care to. The Incredibles. What happened to the supervillains? Seriously. With heroes gone villains should have taken over the world easily. Ban the Spider-Men and Batman. All you're left with is the Punishers. Supervillainy probably became a lot more risky. John Wick 2. The whole secret assassin business was really cool and interesting at first. But as the movie progressed, the more you wonder. Is it really secret? Is there anyone who isn't a F King assassin? Why is no one reacting when people are killing each other in bright daylight? Why does a single drink costs a gold coin? Who does Wix hair? Maze Runner. So mankind is dying out. Rippled by a global disease. And the only way they can find a cure is to build a humongous city sized maze to test teenagers intelligence? Where did they get all that steel? And with humanity falling apart. Who built it? A F King maze? The T-Rex in Jurassic Park runs nearly as fast as a Jeep. But the one in Jurassic World runs slower than an exhausted woman in totally indestructible heels. Edited. They aren't kitten heels. They are three. Five Sam Edelman heels. Apparently. It's also the same T-Rex from Jurassic Park. So age could slow it down. In every Christmas movie where Santa is real but no one believes in him. Who do the parents think is putting these gifts they didn't buy under their Christmas tree? Elysium. You mean to tell me not one philanthropic person decided to put one of those healing machines on earth? Anna's frost sickness thing can only be cured by an act of true love. Back at the castle. Arluf sits with her near the fire and she says. You'll melt. He responds. Some people are worth melting for. Arluf is knowingly and voluntarily killing himself just so that his friend doesn't feel alone during her time of need. How in the FCK does that not constitute an act of true love? Full stop. Edit. Yes I understand that the act of true love needs to come from Anna. Let's hide the son of Anakin with the only family he has. You'll never look there. They hid him on a planet full of sand. You know how Anakin feels about sand. Star Trek. First contact. The Borg are vulnerable to projectiles weapons. As demonstrated by Picar on the holodeck. Why the FCK doesn't Starfleet have dedicated anti-Borg sidearms if it's that easy to kill the drones? Butterfly effect when he goes back to his childhood to poke holes in his hands to prove to his cellmate he had special powers. Completely breaks the causality law in time travel. And the butterfly effect of that event would have most definitely lead to a different result in the timeline of his prison life anyway. War Games. At the climax of the movie. WOPR is trying to crack the code in order to launch international thermonuclear warfare. There are maybe 10 letters digits. Spinning furiously. Everyone scrambles to stop WOPR before it solves the code. About every 30 seconds. 
one by one. It locks in the digits of the code. Until there is just one digit left. Spinning furiously. FCK. There are only 36 possibilities left. Even if it could somehow crack the code one digit at a time. The time to crack the remaining digits should drop exponentially. Ocean's 11. How did those bags with X's get in that elevator? Bug the heck out of me until I read in another thread that even the director could not answer it. Oh well. It's not like that movie was about details and planning. Orphanages are tax emempt. Thereby negating the raison d'etre of the Blues Brothers. When Paul Walker goes to Vin Diesel's house party in the Fast and Furious. They're playing I Got Hose by Ludacris on the stereo. But in Too Fast Too Furious. Ludacris appears as the street racer. Tej Parker. So in the Fast and Furious universe. Who sang I Got Hose? Was it Ludacris? Does Ludacris exist? And if not. What happened to the hose? Who got them now? Are the hose okay? Currently it's the purge. Why would the neighbors want to kill that family? Because they were rich. But they were rich from selling security systems to the neighborhood. Right? So they paid for a commodity and were mad at the guy who sold it to them? I am confused. Not a movie but show. In Paw Patrol the construction puppy joins mid-season as a homeless puppy they take him in and give him a job. This is fine. Next season the guy in charge of all the puppies finds a box with all the puppies baby toys and the construction dog has one. Um he was never in the Paw Patrol as a baby. Nala and the lionesses could have overtaken Scar and the hyenas at any point. They proved to be young. Strong warriors that could have easily conquered some malnourished hyenas and an old. Frail Scar. Simba. Tymon. And Pumba couldn't have influenced the fight all that much. Lions need a male in the pride to keep from going extinct. Scar was the only one. Basically. Either. 1. Women have no initiative. 2. All of the lionesses needed that Scar lovin. I'm not sure which I want to think about less. Where was his super suit? The Force Awakens. BB-8 is a rare droid. He sticks out like a sore thumb. He's the reason they get spotted a dozen times. They don't make bags in the SW universe. Spray paint? Boxes? Wagons? No way to keep him out of sight. In Back to the Future. At the end after Doc Brown gets shot, wearing the bulletproof vest, the Libyans simply crashed into a kiosk. They didn't die or disappear. The terrorists were still there and dangerous but they acted like the kiosk completely did them in. In Finding Dory how does the whale shark speak whale? This is a big part of Finding Dory and comes into play in Finding Noah as well. Another thing in Finding Dory that bothered me was that. Presumably. Finding Nemo is journey from the Great Barrier Reef to Sydney. In Finding Dory. Marlon and Nemo basically show up in California in the first 15 minutes of the movie. That's a long journey for a fish that took days, weeks, comma to go a few miles. Why didn't Ariel write a letter to Prince Eric? Illiteracy? TV show. Gilligan's Island. 1. Why so many clothes for a 3 hour tour? 2. Why was the professor able to build all those huts and radio with a coconut? Sorry. But he couldn't fix the damn boat. The professor was on an island with Marianne and Ginger and no competition to have sex with them. He had to pretend to be trying to get them off the island but he was in no hurry to leave. Why is there Nazi base in Egypt? Complete with tons of soldiers. And aircraft. Digging for the Ark. In Egypt was practically a British colony at the time. The stupid tank keychain thing in Anban. It would have been better if they hadn't tried to explain how the shrinking works. Because they completely ignore it after they do. Entire Harry Potter series, and the books as well. I am a huge fan but I gotta say that Quidditch is absolutely pointless. 99% of game time action is dedicated to scoring the Quaffle for 10 points per score. Meanwhile the game doesn't end until one team's seeker catches the snitch for 150 points. 
why would a team ever even attempt to catch the snitch if they were down 150 points? Assuming that the majority of games are somewhat competitive. With scores within a 150 point difference. The entire game is pointless besides the two teams seekers. Imagine Barcelona is up 14-0 to Real Madrid. Cristiano Ronaldo catches a firefly in his bare hands and the game is effectively over giving Real Madrid the win. JKR's treatment of Quidditch makes it really obvious she was never into team sports. There's so many things wrong with the game. Like they talk about what a rough game it is and make reference to substitutes. But then none of the house teams actually have backups. In I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry why do they not say they will both be? I get why but it's still dumb and really pisses me off. I still don't get what Diana's plan was in Batman vs Superman. She knows Lex has a photograph of her during the first world war. So she goes to the party and then what? Through sheer luck. Bruce Wayne is also at the party and is looking to steal data from the same computers so he. With his Wayne Industries high tech hacking device. Copies all of the data off the server. Including the photo. Diana steals the device but she can't get past Lex's encryption. So what was her plan when she walked in there? Threaten the server with a sword? Use lasso of truth to ask for the password? Harry Potter had tons of money and dead parents and didn't even become the F King Batman. No butler. In Face Off. The greatest movie of all time. Sean Archer, with Caster Troy's face, tries to prove to his wife that he is in fact Sean Archer by taking a blood test to demonstrate that his blood type is different from Caster Troy's. From my very rudimentary understanding of transplants. Don't you have to have the same blood type as the person you're getting the body parts from? And then Sean Archer, as Caster Troy, shares with Eve, his wife, some stories that only he would know. Why didn't he do that from the jump? Instead of making Eve extract blood from Caster Troy, as Sean Archer, while he slept. Ugh this movie is so good I get so upset. At the end on the Godzilla movie when they think they destroyed Godzilla and all the babies there is a close up of a hidden egg and it suddenly hatches to a baby Godzilla who have been missed by everybody. It's been a decade and it still piss me off not knowing what happened to that baby Zilla. Did 9 stroke 11 happen in the Cars universe? The thing I really like about planes is that we learned that World War 2 happened in the Cars universe. Which means there was a Cars Hitler. A Cars Holocaust. A Cars Pacific War. A Cars D-Day. A Cars nuking of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. A Cars Arpe of Nanking. Cars Battle of Iwo Jima. This leads to so many important questions. Like. Were the Cars little boy and fat man nukes sentient? Was it a suicide mission? Are all Cars nuclear weapons sentient? Did Tsar Bomber have a personality? What kind of car was Car Hitler? A VW? A forklift? Was there a Cars 9 stroke 11? Were the planes hijacked? Or were the planes themselves radicalized? I could go on edit. In Back to the Future 2 if old Biff brought the time machine back to 1955 and gave Biff the sports almanac. Then when he returned to 2015 it should have been the Biff alternative universe of 2015. And not the normal one. So. You can set spoiler tags this way. Your text, spoiler. Then remove the blank between and spoiler. It will look like this. OP is a bundle of sticks, spoiler. Why didn't any of the paintings on the walls notice the big ass snake going around murdering people in Harry Potter? For that matter. Why didn't they just ask the paintings about the Chamber of Secrets? In Phantom Menace. Anakin gives his mom the money he got from selling the pod racer. Earlier in the film Watto says no pod is worth two slaves. This. Along with the fact that Watto accepted a wager of the pod against one slave's, Anakin's, freedom. Implies if not establishes that Anakin's pod is worth one slave. Anakin's pod also just won the race. Making it even more valuable to any racer who wants to beat Sebulba. So Anakin very likely hands his mom enough money to free herself. And yet she stays behind. Which is huge ramifications for the next two movies. 
Even if. For some reason. Anakin didn't give Shmi enough to buy her freedom. The Jedi could have at least had a bit of compassion and gone back to free her. Instead they all but kidnapped him. Indoctrinated him. And kept him away from his family. Then they can't figure out why he had major issues growing up. TL. DR. In Phantom Menace. Anakin gave Shmi enough money to buy her freedom. But for plot reasons she remained a slave. Looper. If you kill yourself to prevent yourself from coming back in time to kill the kid in order to prevent the kid from becoming a super villain then you cancel the entire series of events leading to that point and your particular timeline collapses. Probably. That movie straight up told you not to think about it too much. Because time travel is inherently flawed. In the movie's cars. Why did the minivan have a mattress strapped to the roof? I just came here to say the Dark Tower movie can eat a dick. Austin Powers froze himself for 30 years. In Goldmember. His father is only 65-ish and was never frozen as far as we know. Austin is about 30 so his father must have had him when he was 5. Avengers Ultron. A black hole of plot holes. In the first scene. The evil fortress is protected by a force field. Wouldn't that be insanely useful to have in the rest of the movie? In The Wizard of Oz she goes on this big adventure comes home and gives her speech on how she missed everyone. Oh yeah Dorothy the evil lady is still gonna come kill your dog tomorrow. The raft was big enough for two people. But not buoyant enough to keep the mass of two people out of the water. If Buzz Lightyear really thought he was a spaceman. He wouldn't have stopped moving when Andy was on all sides. Maybe it's an instinctual response that the toys have no control over? In the Star Wars prequels why wasn't Anakin made the padawan of a more experienced Jedi Master? Obi-Wan was a remarkable Jedi but he'd only just become a Jedi Knight and he was entrusted with the education of the most powerful boy in the entire galaxy. Obi-Wan was also the only Jedi alive at the time who had defeated a Sith Lord, Darth Maul. So I guess they felt he was capable of training Anakin. Obi-Wan argued against the council for it. Because Obi-Wan had promised Qui-Gon that he would train Anakin.